Hello, everyone, and welcome back to English with Lucy. Today, I have got a mammoth video for you. As I'm sure you've seen in the title, you are going to learn 111 idioms. But actually, there might be a couple more in there. You'll have to see. Now, I'm sure you've got ants in your pants. I'm sure you're very excited to start this lesson. That was an idiom, number one. But before we get started, I have got the most fantastic free gift for you to download right now. In this lesson, we're going to discuss over 111 idioms with the pronunciation, with the definition, and an example. Well, I have created a free ebook to go with today's lesson. It contains all of the information and loads of quizzes so that you can test your understanding of the idioms. If you'd like to download that free ebook that I've made especially for this lesson, all you've got to do is click on the link in the description box, you enter your name and your email address, you sign up to my mailing list, and then the free ebook will arrive directly in your email inbox. After that, you've joined the PDF club, you will automatically receive all of my free weekly lesson PDFs, along with all of my news, course updates, and offers. It's a free service and you can unsubscribe at any time. Okay, let's get started with the idioms. So to make this easier for you and more comprehensive, I've separated today's idioms into various categories so that everything is nice and organized for you. It also looks beautiful in the ebook. My aim is to train you to have idioms ready for any situation. I think that the best place to start is to learn some idioms to talk about different levels of happiness and excitement. Number one, in seventh heaven. This means extremely happy or joyful. She was in seventh heaven after finding out she was pregnant. Two, to paint the town red, to go out and enjoy oneself by engaging in lively activities. After their exams, Oliver and his mates decided to paint the town red by hitting as many pubs as they could. Three, over the moon. This means extremely delighted or thrilled. When he received his dream job offer, he was over the moon with excitement. Four, similar, on cloud nine. This is a state of complete happiness or euphoria. Tabitha was on cloud nine when she found out her mum was coming for a visit. Five, on top of the world, feeling extremely successful, confident and happy. I just landed the lead part in a play I'm on top of the world. Six, to have a whale of a time. To have an extremely enjoyable and exciting time. During their vacation, they had a whale of a time exploring the beautiful beaches. And seven, to have the time of one's life. To have an exceptionally enjoyable or memorable experience. With the wind in their hair and the ocean beneath their boards, they surfed having the time of their lives. Full of the joys of spring, this is slightly more old fashioned, to be extremely happy, cheerful or full of enthusiasm. Even though the rain showed no signs of letting up, she sat in her cosy chair with her book, full of the joys of spring. Nine, to make one's day. This is to greatly please or delight someone. Receiving a handwritten letter from her favorite author made her day. And number 10 to conclude this section, in raptures about or over, in raptures about, in raptures over, in a state of extreme delight or excitement about something. The audience was in raptures over the hilarious performance by the improv comedy act. Let's move on to our next topic. We also like to use idioms to talk about our overall health. So let's have a look at some of my favorites. We have number 11, to kick the bucket. This is to die or pass away. No, Bob isn't coming to the reunion. He kicked the bucket last spring. 12. A clean bill of health. This is a statement or certification of being in good health. After a thorough medical examination, the doctor gave me a clean bill of health. 13. Like death warmed up. Looking extremely ill or unhealthy. Sarah caught a terrible cold but went to work anyway despite looking like death warmed up. 14. As fit as a fiddle. This means in excellent physical health and condition. 
John exercises regularly to remain as fit as a fiddle at the ripe old age of 86. 15. To go under the knife. This is to undergo surgery or a medical operation. 16. To have one foot in the grave. This is to be near death or in very poor health. After his heart attack, Tom felt like he had one foot in the grave and wasn't about to waste a single moment. 17. To recharge one's batteries. This is to take a break and rest to regain energy and strength. Julia decided it was finally time to have a weekend getaway to recharge her batteries. 18. As right as rain. This is in perfect order or condition. Perfectly fine. Although she had been feeling unwell, after a good night's sleep, she woke up feeling as right as rain. Number 19, as fresh as a daisy. This is feeling or appearing refreshed and energetic. I felt as fresh as a daisy after my long shower, followed by a warm cup of tea. 20, as pale as a ghost or as pale as death. Not a death, as death. This is having a very pale complexion, often due to fear, illness or shock. The loud crashing sound downstairs caused Jane to turn as pale as a ghost. Number 21, a bag of bones. If someone looks like a bag of bones, they are very thin, typically with prominent bones visible. She felt like a bag of bones after losing weight unintentionally. Okay, next topic. I'm British, it's going to be the weather. Weather is always a big topic here in the UK, so it's no surprise that we have loads and loads of idioms that utilise different natural phenomena. 22, to kick up a storm. This is to cause a significant commotion or controversy. The scandalous revelation kicked up a storm of media frenzy, sparking intense public interest. 23, the calm before the storm. This is a period of relative peace or tranquility before a more turbulent or difficult situation arises. The office seemed quiet, but everyone knew it was just the calm before the storm of the new product launch. 24. To steal someone's thunder. This is to take attention or credit away from someone by doing or saying something that outshines or eclipses their achievement or idea. Phyllis had prepared an elaborate surprise, but Jan's unexpected announcement stole her thunder. 25, where there's smoke, there's fire. This means if there are signs or indications of a problem or issue, it is likely that a problem or issue exists. Rumors about layoffs at the company have been circulating and where there's smoke, there's fire. 26, to throw caution to the wind to act without considering the possible risks or consequences. Despite the warnings, he threw caution to the wind, quite literally, and went skydiving for the first time. 27. To chase rainbows. To pursue unrealistic or unattainable goals or dreams. Instead of focusing on practical career options, he spent his life chasing rainbows and never achieved stability. 28. A storm in a teacup. That's so British. We love the weather and we also love tea. A storm in a teacup. This is a situation that is exaggerated or blown out of proportion, making it seem more significant or serious than it actually is. The argument between the colleagues turned out to be a storm in a teacup and was quickly resolved. 29. Snowed under. This is overwhelmed with a large amount of work, tasks or responsibilities. With the approaching exams, she was completely snowed under and had to study late into the night. 30. To have one's head in the clouds. This is to be daydreaming or not paying attention to or not being aware of what is happening around oneself. During the meeting, Pia seemed to have her head in the clouds and didn't contribute much. 31. To take a rain check. This is to decline an offer or invitation at the present time, but suggest doing it at a later date. Sorry, I can't make it tonight. Can I take a rain check and reschedule? Okay, next topic. Now, I tend to catch the travel bug from time to time, and I'm sure a lot of you do too. So let's learn some idioms related to travel, as well as some idioms that utilize travel-related vocabulary. Starting with number 32, first for adventure. This is a strong desire or craving 
for exciting and daring experiences. My group of friends and I planned an epic road trip to satisfy our collective thirst for adventure. 33. Off the beaten track. This means in a remote or less travelled location, away from the mainstream or popular tourist areas. They decided to go camping in a small village off the beaten track to escape the crowds. 34. To have itchy feet. This is to have a strong desire or restlessness to travel or explore new places. After staying in the same city for years, we had itchy feet and wanted to experience new cultures. 35. To get away from it all. This is to escape or to take a break from one's usual routine or responsibilities, often in search of relaxation. Escaping to a remote tropical island is the perfect way to get away from it all. 36. To hit the road. This is to begin a journey or trip, usually by driving. It's time to hit the road and start our next adventure. We can also use this one to say we are leaving. It's time to hit the road. See you tomorrow. 37. Hustle and bustle. This is busy and noisy activity, often associated with a crowded or lively environment. The city centre was full of hustle and bustle with people rushing around. 38. To catch some rays. This is to spend time in the sun, often to relax or sunbathe. They headed to the beach to catch some rays and enjoy the warm summer weather. 39. A mile a minute. This is at a very fast or rapid pace, quickly and energetically. She talks a mile a minute but always has something interesting to say. 40. In the same boat. This means in the same situation or predicament as others, facing a common challenge or circumstance. We may have different backgrounds, but during tough times, we're all in the same boat. 41. Right up one's street. This is perfectly suited or aligned with one's interests or preferences. With her passion for cooking, this culinary class is going to be right up her street. Okay, next topic, time. We also have loads of idioms to talk about time and getting tasks done. We don't have a moment to lose, so let's get on with the first one. We have 42 round the clock. This means all day and all night without stopping. My mum was a nurse who often worked round the clock to take care of her patients. 43. To call it a day or to call it a night. This is to stop what you're doing because you don't want to do any more or you think you have done enough. After hours of negotiations that were going around in circles, they decided to call it a night. 44. The moment of truth. This is the time when a person or thing is tested or a decision has to be made. The job interview had arrived and it was the moment of truth to showcase his skills and qualifications. 45. Love this one. Donkey's years. This means a very long time. He's been telling that same joke for donkey's years, but it still manages to get a few laughs. 46. Once in a blue moon. This means very rarely. He doesn't eat out often. It only happens once in a blue moon. 47. Round the corner. This is very near or happening soon. The deadline for this project is just round the corner, so we need to pick up the pace. 48. Like clockwork. This means happening exactly as planned, without any trouble or delay. The wedding went like clockwork, with every detail perfectly timed. Okay, these next three are all quite similar in meaning. We have 49. Down to the wire, meaning until the last possible moment, with only seconds left on the clock, the game went down to the wire, keeping spectators on edge. 50. At the 11th hour, at the last possible moment, the deal was saved at the 11th hour when an unknown investor stepped in with the necessary funds. And 51. In the nick of time. This means just in time, or at the last possible moment. He arrived at the airport in the nick of time, just as his flight was due to depart. Okay, next topic. Who doesn't enjoy gossiping about love and relationships? Well, these idioms will be perfect for your next chinwag. <laughs> Let's start with number 52, to fall head over heels. This is to fall deeply in love or to become infatuated with someone or something, like an animal. When she saw the adorable puppy, she fell head over heels and knew she had to adopt it. 
53, the apple of one's eye. This is someone or something that is cherished or highly valued by someone else. His daughter is the apple of his eye. He adores her. 54, to tie the knot. This is to get married or enter into a formal union. After years of dating, they decided it was time to finally tie the knot. 55, to steal one's heart. This is to captivate or charm someone in a way that they fall in love or become deeply attracted. Her infectious laughter and warm personality instantly stole his heart. 56, to pop the question. This is to propose marriage to someone. With the diamond ring hidden in his coat pocket, he planned the perfect moment to pop the question. 57, to play hard to get. This is to act uninterested in order to increase one's desirability or attractiveness to another person. It was clear she was interested, but she couldn't resist playing hard to get, adding to the excitement. 58, to hit it off with someone. This is to have an instant connection or rapport with someone. From the moment they met, they hit it off and became close friends. 59, to be stood up. This is to be intentionally or unexpectedly left waiting for someone who doesn't show up for a planned meeting or date. Glenda arrived at the restaurant eagerly, only to be stood up by her date. And 60, a match made in heaven. This is a couple or pairing that is perfectly suited for each other and seems destined to be together. With their shared interests and values, they truly are a match made in heaven. 61, an old flame. This is a past romantic partner or love interest. When Marsha moved back to her hometown, she reconnected with an old flame from sixth form. Okay, next topic, we have so many color related idioms. You've actually already seen a couple, let's go over some of the most common. 62, to get the green light. This is to receive permission to proceed with a project or action. We finally got the green light to start the new marketing campaign. 63, out of the blue. This is suddenly and unexpectedly. I hadn't heard from him in years, but then he called me out of the blue. 64, green with envy. This is very jealous or envious. She was green with envy when she saw her friend's new car. 65, to be tickled pink. This is to be very pleased or amused. Tony was tickled pink by the surprise party his friends threw for him at the office. 66, golden opportunity. This is an excellent opportunity that is not likely to be repeated. This job is a golden opportunity for someone with a background in journalism like yourself. 67, rose-coloured or rose-tinted spectacles. This is an optimistic perception of something or a really positive perspective, often used when we look back in the past. Note that you can also say glasses instead of spectacles. She always sees the world through rose-tinted spectacles, but sometimes I feel she really needs a reality check. There's a bonus idiom there, reality check. This is an event or situation that brings a person back to the harsh or practical realities of life. 68, a gray area. This is a situation not clearly defined or that falls between two extremes. Their relationship was undefined, existing in a gray area between friendship and romance. 69, to be caught red-handed. This is to catch someone in the act of doing something wrong. My daughter was caught stealing biscuits red-handed, or should I say, biscuit-faced. 70, yellow-bellied or just yellow. This means cowardly or easily scared. He was too yellow-bellied to confront his boss about the ongoing issues he faced. And last one for this topic, on a silver platter. If you are given something on a silver platter, it's given to you without having to work or make an effort for it. He expected success to come to him effortlessly, always wanting things served on a silver platter. Okay, new topic, like colors, Animals are also really popular subjects in idioms, and luckily they tend to be some of the best ones. Let's look at number 72, eager beaver. This is a person who is enthusiastic, energetic, and eager to work or participate. Rommel is always the first one to volunteer for new projects. He's such an eager beaver. 73, to take the bull by the horns. This is to confront a difficult or challenging situation directly and decisively. Instead of avoiding the issue, he decided to take the bull by the horns and address the problem 
head on. 74. To let the cat out of the bag. This is to reveal a secret or disclose confidential information unintentionally or carelessly. My dad couldn't contain his excitement and let the cat out of the bag about our vacation destination. 75. Until the cows come home. This means for a very long time, indefinitely or without a definite end. I know you want to play video games until the cows come home, but eventually you need to do your homework. 76. To drop like flies. This is to rapidly decrease in number or weaken significantly, often due to illness or other negative factors. During the flu season, people were dropping like flies and the hospital was overwhelmed. 77. To hold one's horses. This is to be patient, wait, or stop rushing. I know you're excited, but hold your horses. And let's make a plan first. 78 is to pig out. To pig out. This means to eat excessively or indulge in large quantities of food, often in an uncontrolled manner. After weeks of dieting, he decided to pig out and enjoy a cheat day with all his favorite snacks. 79 is to smell a rat. This is to suspect or sense that something is wrong or suspicious. Carolina's instincts told her to be cautious as she began to smell a rat in their business dealings. 80. Did you hear this one at the start? To have ants in one's pants. This is to be unable to sit still or to be restless due to impatience, excitement or anxiety. I've got ants in my pants about this presentation tomorrow. Help me calm down. 81. To have other or bigger fish to fry. This is to have more important or pressing matters to attend to to be preoccupied with other tasks or concerns. Sorry, I can't join you for dinner tonight. I have other fish to fry with this project deadline. Okay, new topic. Next up, we have some incredible idioms that are perfect for describing people, specifically people with unique character traits. Let's start with 82, chatterbox. This is a person who talks a lot. My little niece is such a chatterbox. She can talk for hours about the most random things. 83. Loose cannon, and my husband sometimes calls me loose, as in short for Lucy, cannon. <laughs> this is a person who behaves in an uncontrolled or unpredictable manner, often causing damage or danger. He's a loose cannon, you never know what he might say or do next. 84, wet blanket. This is a person who spoils other people's fun by failing to join in with or by disapproving of their activities. Don't invite him to the party, he's such a wet blanket. 85. To blow one's own trumpet. This is to boast or brag about one's own abilities or achievements. He never misses an opportunity to blow his own trumpet. 86. The salt of the earth. This is a person or people of great kindness, reliability or honesty. She's the salt of the earth, always ready to help those in need. 87. Fair weather friend. This is a person who is only a friend when circumstances are pleasant or profitable. When I was rich, I had many friends, but I found out most of them were just fair weather friends. Number 88 is a jack of all trades. This is a person who can do many different types of work, but who is not necessarily very competent at any of them. We often call it a jack of all trades, but a master of none. An example, He's a jack of all trades. He can fix anything in the house. 89, a worrywart. This is a person who tends to worry a lot, habitually and also needlessly. Don't be such a worrywart. Everything will be fine. Number 90 is an armchair critic. This is a person who offers advice or an opinion on something in which they have no expertise or involvement. He's an armchair critic, always talking about football, but never playing it. And number 91, the last in this topic, free spirit. This is a person who lives according to their own wishes and beliefs, unconstrained by society's conventions. Shannon's a true free spirit, finding joy in simple pleasures and embracing life's little adventures. Okay, now let's learn some common idioms that utilize numbers. There are loads of these idioms as well, so we're going to just scratch the surface right now. We have number 92, to dress to the nines. This is to dress in a stylish, elegant, or glamorous manner. You can also say to dress to kill as well, but no numbers involved there. My mum always dresses to the nines for special occasions like parties and weddings. Number 93 is to put two and two together. This is to infer or deduce something 
by combining or connecting available information or clues. When she saw the muddy footprints and wet raincoat, she put two and two together and realized he'd been outside in the rain. Number 94, in two minds. This is to be uncertain or undecided, to have conflicting thoughts or opinions about something. My uncle was in two minds about accepting the job offer because it meant moving to a different city. 95, nine to five. <laughs> that works well, didn't it? This is referring to regular office or business hours, a typical full-time job. He works a nine to five job from Monday to Friday and enjoys his weekends off. 96 is back to square one or back at square one. This is returning to the beginning or starting point of a task or process, often due to a lack of progress or a setback. After the computer crashed and deleted all the files, they had to start the project back at square one. 97, the third degree. This is intense or thorough questioning, often to extract information or elicit a confession. Detective Roberts gave the suspect the third degree, relentlessly questioning and probing for answers to solve the case. 98, two left feet. This is lacking coordination or being clumsy, especially when it comes to dancing or physical activities. I can't dance, I've got two left feet and always end up stepping on my partner's toes. 99, two peas in a pod. This means two people or things that are very similar or nearly identical, often used to describe close friends or siblings. They have the same taste in music, fashion, and hobbies. They're like two peas in a pod. 140 winks. This is a short nap or brief period of sleep, usually during the day. I'll just lie down and take 40 winks before dinner. I'm feeling a bit tired. And number 101, second to none. This is unmatched or unrivaled, the best or highest quality. Their customer service is second to none. They always go above and beyond to assist their clients. Okay, of course, I saved the best for last. Let's learn some food-related idioms. We have 102, to bring home the bacon. This is to earn a living or provide financial support for oneself or one's family. He took on multiple jobs to bring home the bacon and save up for his dream holiday. 103, one's bread and butter. This is a person's primary source of income or livelihood. Writing is her bread and butter. You should read some of her early works, masterpieces. 104 is a bad egg. This is a person who is dishonest or untrustworthy. Watch out for him. He's known to be a bad egg who can't be trusted. 105, the cream of the crop. This means the best or finest individuals or things in a particular group or category. The Olympic Games bring together athletes who are considered the cream of the crop in their respective sports. 106, to spill the beans. You often hear to spill the tea as well. That's much more modern though, often heard on YouTube. This is to reveal a secret or disclose information that was meant to be kept confidential. Do you know who spilt the beans about their affair? 107, love this one. Not one's cup of tea. This is something that one doesn't enjoy, have an interest in, or find appealing. Horror films are not her cup of tea. She prefers a cheesy rom-com. 108, in a nutshell. This is in a concise or summarized form, briefly and clearly. She explained the entire situation in a nutshell, highlighting only the relevant points. 109, to eat humble pie. This is to admit one's mistake or defeat and show humility or remorse. After realizing his error, he had to eat humble pie and apologize for his rude behavior. 110, egg on one's face. This is to be embarrassed or humiliated by making a mistake or being proven wrong. His incorrect prediction left him with egg on his face when the opposite outcome occurred. And number 111, in a pickle. This is in a difficult, complicated or problematic situation. We're in a pickle, the car broke down and we're late for an important meeting. Right, those were your 111 idioms, plus a few extra I threw in there for you too. Well done for getting this far in the lesson. Now, if you want to learn these and retain these for life and test your understanding, you need to download the free ebook I made specifically for this lesson. Just click on the link in the description box. It's there waiting for you. That's it from me today. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. I hope you learned something. I would be surprised if you didn't learn something. Don't forget, I have developed 
amazing English courses. We've got B1, B2, C1 and our pronunciation program. To see those, visit englishwithlucy.com or click on the links in the description box. I will see you soon for another lesson. Mwah.